there are a couple of uh, points that we can, you know, get from the readings today. The first one from the Acts of the Apostles reminds us of how the apostles cautioned people who were placing unnecessary burden on people. People who are placing unnecessary restrictions on people. There was this story in the act of the apostle that some men came and started preaching and placing more restrictions on people and the news you now got to the apostles and they were uncomfortable that this is not the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately they made efforts to correct that because Jesus wouldn't want to place burden on people. It doesn't mean that he would not want us to live a holy life, but he doesn't want us to be unnecessarily strict on people. And that's the story of Jesus Christ. Those of you who have so much followed him all through your life will testify that he wouldn't want to place burden on people. Rather, he will find a way to communicate that message, the same true message, but in a way that you will understand it and in a way that you will come to him. That's the first reading, reminding us of that. To place unnecessary burden on people is not Christian. Rather, you'll find a way asking the Spirit of God to guide us so that even as we preach, even if as we minister, or even if as we witness to the gospel, we will be able to present it in a way that people will not feel overburdened by it. And then the gospel also made a point that somehow I feel is some good, something that we can reflect on. He talks about the Holy Spirit, that Jesus told them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am giving you peace. And this peace will help you to run away from being afraid. Why did Jesus make this point? Jesus was with the apostles, with his followers. As you know, when he resurrected from, from death, he continued to appear to his disciples, continues to walk with his followers. And this time around, he was already preparing to ascend to the Father. Ascension is, is, is almost like around the way, around the corner. And Jesus was already preparing the people because he was going to go back to ascend back to his father. And these people that he has been working with all this while, they were already feeling, how can this man abandon us? How can he leave us? And if he leaves us, what are we going to do? And then he made this point, do not be afraid. Have peace. And the peace I'm going to give you is not the peace like human being can give. In other words, he was trying to remind them that the peace he was going to give is authentic peace, the peace that will remain with them to guide them. And he was, he was going to also remind them, or he reminded them that he was going to allow the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to be with them. So two, many, two, point, two major points that he said, I'm going to give you the peace. Do not be afraid. Another one, I will allow, I will make the Holy Spirit to dwell with you so that you will not even feel that I am not there physically. Because they were already feeling that, well, he's going to abandon us. What are we going to do this time around? It's like you have someone so dear in your life. You have so much attached yourself to this very person, and that person is about to leave. How do you feel? You feel a little bit worried, feel a little bit anxious. Where is he going or where is she going? What am I going to do? It is something natural that we all feel if we feel attached to someone. The apostles or the followers of Jesus felt attached to him because of his wonderful gospel. And he came with this very message. I am going to give you this peace. The peace that is greater than the peace that any human being can give. So that you calm down. Do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit will guide you. And this is one of the things that makes me every time to believe that every human being in this world, we all have the spark of the divine in us. No matter how 
we think that this person is so bad or so horrible. That horrible person we think that he is or she is has the spark of the divine in him or her. Why do I believe that? It's also very consistent in the scripture. Because Jesus has always said, I will give you this very spirit. And we have it. We have it already. Even our natural reactions, whatever that happens in our life, will tell you that we have the Holy Spirit in us. Everybody has it. For instance, whenever you are planning to do any evil, you are planning to do any evil, you will be battling with that evil. There is one spirit telling you, go ahead and do it. And the other spirit is telling you, please don't do it. The bad spirit will continue to persuade you. It is okay, do it. But the Holy Spirit will tell you, desist from that, don't do it. So all we need is to, to do is to acknowledge or make effort to acknowledge and verify that the Holy Spirit is there and use that very Holy Spirit instead of using the bad spirit. Sometimes we always give in to the, the, the bad spirit and that's why it comes out in a bad way. But if we give in to the Holy Spirit in us, that Holy Spirit that continues to advise us or tell us or to push us to do the right, if we are able to allow it to happen, that's when the Holy Spirit will begin to guide us. And now Jesus is making a point there, trying to remind us that it is there with us. The Holy Spirit is there. We don't even have to pray for it to come because we have it already. The Holy Spirit is with us already. All we need to do is to make use of it. Uh, that's why I like one of these homily of a priest who was trying to preach about the Holy Spirit and he told the congregation that everyone has the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is to activate that Holy Spirit in you. And the priest was preaching to American congregation because they know that Americans know the meaning of activation. If you have your credit card and you don't activate it, you know what happened? You, you will not be able to make use of it. So that's similar to what happens in our life. We have the Holy Spirit, but we have to activate that Holy Spirit so that it can help us to live the life of the Spirit of God. It can also help us not only to live the life of the Holy the Spirit of God, to give up, to give this, the, uh, the gift of peace that Jesus has given to us. He says, I'm giving you a gift of peace. And I have no doubt that there are people in our life that need to receive the gift of peace. Uh, this weekend, we are celebrating the Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow we have Mass at 10 a.m., which is a time that we pray for those who have given their life or that sacrifice their personal comfort in order that Americans will have peace. If they didn't sacrifice that, their personal comfort, probably you will not have peace in this country at all. But because they are able to give us their personal comfort, even some gave up, you know, sacrificed their, the possibility of staying with their family very close only to make sure that there is peace in this nation. So that's exactly what Jesus is talking about. It's talking something that, that we can find a way to give peace to those who are in need of it, even those who are sick. If you are in a, have the opportunity to come close to the people like that, and offer them word of advice. That is the peace that that person needs at that moment. Those who have financial problem, even if you don't have the money to offer, but you're able to console and to be with the person by word of mouth, by advice, I think you're also doing your own role by offering the gift of peace, extending that very gift of peace that Jesus gave to us. He wants us not only to keep it to ourselves, but to give it to those who are very anxious, who are worried of what is going to happen in their life. And so, my dear friends, the Holy Spirit is always there to guide us and is in all of us. All we just need is to make use of it. And you'll be wondered, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Amen.